Hello, welcome to Here Comes the Bride, The Church Begins. I am Pastor Jim DeVore, the pastor at Cornerstone Church of Little Rock in Southern California. And we are so glad to be with you as we take a look now at the book of Acts, chapter 22, devotional number 54 in our series of the book of Acts as we take a look at the church and the beginning of the church. And so as we go through this, we ask three simple questions. What do we see as we read the scripture here in God's eternal plan? That's kind of the question you ask every time you read the scripture. Secondly, what do you see God um, doing concerning his eternal plan, either with the church, through the church, or for the church? And third, what do we see with God's eternal plan concerning individual people, either with them or for them or through them? Okay, so we are dealing with Paul. He is at, uh, He's finished a third missionary journey. He's back in Jerusalem. He has been uh, grabbed by the Jewish people, brought before the tribunal, and now he's going to give his defense. Um, um, and this is the beginning of his of his of it. So in verse uh, 27, it says Paul was about to be brought into the barracks. He said to the tribune, "May I say something to you?" And he said, "Do you know Greek? Are you not the Egyptian then who recently stirred up a revolt and led the four thousand men of the assassins out in the wilderness?" Paul replied, "I am a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia, a citizen of no obscure city." I beg you, permit me to speak to the people. So he's being, the tribunal came, the, the people are attacking Paul, the tribune comes, breaks it up, drags Paul away from them, but is still planning to arrest them. Paul wants to address his people. In verse 40, when he had given information, Paul standing on the steps, motioned with his hand to the people, and when there was great hush, he addressed them in the Hebrew language. Now he's going to address his people, okay? So, uh, if we go all the way back to verse 30, they seized Paul, dragged him out of the temple, the gates were shut, and they were seeking to kill him. Word got to the tribunal in verse 31, and they came in the midst of the confusion to, to put down a mob riot, and not so much just to protect Paul, but to keep from a, a, a huge mob riot going on. And But they've got Paul, now they got to figure out what to do with him. They're getting ready to take him in, in a sense, to, to uh, bring him before the Roman authorities, but before they do that, Paul asks to speak to the people, okay? And he addresses them in the Hebrew language. Okay, here we are, chapter 22, beginning in verse 1. Uh, and some of you may have it literally as the end of chapter 21, depending on how your, your Bible breaks this up. But basically, it says, Brothers and fathers, hear the defense that I now make before you. This is Paul, addressing fellow Jews and as well as older Jews, showing them respect, okay? Brothers and fathers. Verse 2, And when they heard that he was addressing them in the Hebrew language, they became even more quiet. They're impressed. This guy is speaking to them in their language, so he's showing respect to them by addressing them in their language, okay? He said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus in Cilicia, but brought up in this city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel, according to the strict manner of the laws of our elders, being zealous for God, as all of you are this day. So Paul's telling all these Jews, I'm one of you, okay? I was born in a different city, but raised in Jerusalem. I studied under Gamaliel, okay? So a, a very well-known Jewish rabbi, okay? So good standing. So Paul began there, okay? He was, he was spiritually raised according to the strict manner of the law of our fathers, so he followed the law with very, very strict authority, and he was zealous for God, as all of you are this day. You think, look, guys, I, I am one of those people. I'm zealous for the law. I'm not denying it. I'm zealous to follow God. I'm not denying him. I am like you, okay? And so let us identify that we are one of the same people, okay? Verse 4, I persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering to prison both men and women. Okay, so now he's saying, you're now persecuting me because I'm part of the way, but I'm telling you I used to be one of you who also persecuted the people of the way, which is going to cause everybody to kind of go, wait a minute, wait a minute, this guy sounds like one of us. How, what has turned him? Okay, Paul is, is identifying with them. He is coming alongside them so that he can they can relate to him. He shares his testimony, okay? That's a, that's a tip for you and I. When you are sharing your testimony, it's, you don't want to tell the people how bad and different and wrong um, they are of you or from God. 
You want to try to connect. You want to show some sincerity. You want to show that you care about them. If you can honestly relate to their their pre-saved situation, then relate. If you can't, you can still acknowledge that you are a pre-saved person too and that just as God cares for you, he cares for them. You want to try to make a connection. Again, you're not trying to win a point. You're trying to win a person. You're going to win a person not through great arguing, but through developing great relationship. That's what Paul is attempting to do here. Okay? So, verse 4 again, I persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering to prison both men and women, as the high priest and the whole council of elders can bear me witness. So, in other words, he wasn't all by himself. He had their support and their challenge. And he's saying, look, if you don't believe me, what I'm telling you, go to the high priest. Go to the elders. They're going to tell you, yes, Paul was one of us. Yes, he persecuted the way, and yes, he's changed, and now he believes in the way, okay? From then, from them, I received letters to the brothers, and I journeyed toward Damascus to take those also who were there and bring them in bonds to Jerusalem to be punished, okay? They sent me to Damascus. After I'd done punishing in Jerusalem, I asked to go to Damascus. They gave me written orders to go to Damascus so I could do more punishing of the people in the way there. Okay, all right, now we're going to hear his testimony. As I was on my way and drew near to Damascus, about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice calling out, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but did not understand the voice of the one who was speaking to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, Rise and go into Damascus, and there you will be told all that is appointed for you to do. And since I could not see because of the brightness of that light, I was led by the hand by those who were with me and came into Damascus. Here's Paul telling in a matter of four or five verses his what leads him to change in his life to embrace Jesus. Okay? I hope you're paying attention here, okay? You, you want to share your testimony with people. You want to connect with them, but you want to be concise. You're going to read all of Paul's testimony in about three minutes, okay? He's going to connect with his people. He's going to identify with them. He's going to tell them um, what leads him specifically to receiving Christ. Now, his is pretty dramatic. I'm not expecting most of you to be knocked to the ground by a bright light in the voice of the Lord, okay? But that doesn't mean that your testimony is not dramatic, you want to be able to share specifically, hey, what led you to this point, okay? I mean, there's going to be some uniqueness to it. Mine is, I was le- reading a comic book, a Christian comic book. They're called Chick Tracks. I've been reading a bunch of them and laughed at them. But this last one I read, I didn't laugh at anymore. It challenged me that without Jesus, I was going to spend eternity in hell. And though others had said that, suddenly this one scared me. That's the precursor. That's God's method. What was God's method in your life to leading you to a point of decision? Okay, all righty. Verse 12 now. And one Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, well spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me and standing by me said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very hour I received my sight and saw him. So now Paul tells us about the person, the situation that actually, that, that he was led to or that God brought to him in order to actually understand what the next step is. So after you felt led by God, and maybe at the time you didn't realize it, but suddenly you realize it, who or what explained your actual step to give yourself to God? For me, it was the prayer at the end of the booklet. Okay, for you, maybe it was an altar call. Maybe it was a friend. Maybe it was a pastor. Maybe it was something on the radio or TV that you heard or something you read in a book. What was the method of explanation to you after God drew you to him and opened your eyes to him that he began to use to help you to commit to him? For Paul, it was a friend. Well, it wasn't his friend at that point. It was a guy who came and told him about Jesus, okay? And he said, The God of our fathers appointed you to know his will, to see the righteous one, that would be Jesus, to hear a voice from his mouth, for you will be a witness for him to everyone what you have seen and heard. And now why why do you wait Rise, me baptized, and wash away your sins, calling on his name. Which we read when we go back to Acts chapter 8, we see that's exactly what Paul did. So now, how do we know Paul is saved? Since we don't have a little, you know, I prayed the prayer. We see him follow the Lord in obedience. He hears Ananias. He hears what Ananias says about 
um, the righteous one is the one who spoke to him. And now that one is telling him to be baptized. And so Paul says, I'm going to obey him. I'm going to obey that voice. I'm going to obey that one. I know it's the Lord Jesus. I'm going to be baptized. I'm going to follow in obedience. There is, there is the sign of his salvation, not the words of his pray to prayer. We don't get the actual words. We get the response of obedience to do what God's asked him to do. Okay? Now, your prayer of words of a willingness to obey and follow Jesus are helpful because it's your formal commitment to him. And it can kind of be that spot where you hang on. You say, this is when I prayed. But your salvation isn't determined by your prayer. Your salvation is determined by your willingness to obey afterwards, not your willingness and ability to become perfect, your willingness simply to obey. All right? Let's go ahead and pause in Paul's testimony right there. There's more to it, but we're going to pause at it right there, kind of let you sink it through that as a one who shares your testimony, you want to identify, you want to share kind of the event and the situation that leads you up to being open to hear of Jesus, and then how did you actually hear of Jesus, and how did you actually respond to him? What st statements or commitments of step of commitment to Jesus did you make? Okay, and then um, and then do we and then what were your steps of obedience afterwards that demonstrated that the Holy Spirit had come into your life at your request for that and asking for forgiveness and putting Jesus in charge of your life? What were steps of obedience you took afterwards that you wouldn't have taken before? Was a sign that the Holy Spirit lived within you. Okay, now quick statement. If you've prayed the prayer and you don't have any steps of obedience, then it sounds to me like you had some nice words but no heart commitment. So you need to come back to obedience. If you've never done any of that then and you want to do it, then God is using this, this uh, devotional to challenge you. And so let me simply say if you're at that point where you see Jesus and your need for Jesus, then let's go to Romans 10.9. You can read it. I'm going to say it. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you shall be saved. Confess means agree out loud. You are God. I am sinful. Please forgive me for my sin. You are to be in charge. I'm not to be in charge. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You can, you're not just praying to anybody. You're praying to the Jesus Christ who died on the cross to pay the penalty for your sin. God, very God, lived a perfect life, died on the cross, rose from the dead, proving that he'd conquered sin. Forty days later, ascended to the Father where he's there today interceding for you. That's the Jesus Christ that you're believing in your heart in, that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. And then the next part of that verse says, with your mouth you confess, okay? And then with your heart you believe. So that's how you do that, okay? All right. Um, if you've done that, then you need to send me an email. And you can do that by going to the web page and you'll see where it says email us on the front page. Send me an email or just listen carefully. My email is jimdevore at myccol.org. jimdevore at myccol.org. Please send me an email. But just use the link at the front of the, uh, the, front of the first page. It'll be a lot easier. All right, we'll continue Paul's testimony when we return to Here Comes the Bride, The Church Begins. <laughs> 